Welcome students. We're looking at the second poem in this unit, the sonnet by A.J. Seymour. And we're specifically looking at how literary devices deliver meaning. And so we hold our thesis strong because that is going to be the guiding light. It's going to help you to pivot all of your sentences and your essay. And so we had a thesis statement that went like this. Human attempts to tame environment. So we said that Seymour's sonnet presents human attempts to tame environment. Now at the low levels of school, you may, might have heard it described as a particular theme, the phrase man and his environment is used in the high school. And so we just take it up a notch, just up our level, we up our game a little bit. So let me quickly look at some of the devices and how they work. So thesis, Seymour's sonnet, presents humans wrestling with environment. And right away, there's an opposition that is set up. Humans against environment. And in this particular case, it is the Guyana jungle. So taming Guyana. And yes, we're back to the explorers who came, the people who came, and these were the Dutch planters, and they metaphorically tamed the environment. What do we mean? Harnessed the resources, prevented the water from flooding the land by building, what do we call them? Uh, dams and cokers. And so, yes, let's see. How man's attempt succeeds. We find that the imagery that's given to us is at once of nature. And nature is presented as green, beautiful, free. And sometimes it is presented as wild. So, vegetation towering and tangling around the banks of the river and that's in Sanzo one and there are black waters running silently silently and so yes a particular mood is set with the images and the metaphors specific place name is given to identify the environment. So we know it's about the Guyana environment where there is a dream of perished Dutch plantations. Perished Dutch means that attempts were made to have sugar plantations, coffee plantations, cotton plantations, along the banks of the river and in some cases they fail in some cases there was success we find nature presented as passive something that's always acted upon and whether it's a good thing or a bad thing you'll have to decide in when you're writing your essay but within the first eight lines in the first octave you get a stark contrast of nature versus human effort at settling. So the images of human settlement, lost settlings, trim dwellings, fields of indigo. And so you get a sense of the efforts made by man to tame the environment. And that is delivered in the octave. Now, the sestet probably presents a different view. Let's see. 
the Im the rivers are now personified. Rivers know that the men drove back the jungle. So rivers are given lifelike qualities. And so it's birth not only of settlements, but probably birth of country, nation, Guyana. Drove back a jungle, gave Guyana root. Against the shock of circumstance. And then history moved down the river. So they created history. But what happened? So the ending of the poem presents you with a twist. In the sestet, you have a very stark contrast to what comes in the octave. In the sestet, you get the sense that the strong and quiet men have not succeeded entirely. Because here you have the forests creeping back, foot by quiet foot. Foot meaning a measurement, three feet, 50 feet, 80 feet. And so foot by quiet foot is also an example of punning. Walking, measuring, foot by quiet foot. It's also an example of personification. The forest creeping and moving. And what remains? Black water is heading to the sea. And so, yes, you give attention there to how imagery delivers. We've mentioned how metaphors deliver. We've looked at how contrast works. We've looked at humans pitted against environment. We've looked at all of the images, the, the, the tame versus the quote-unquote wild. And in that way, you address your poem for analysis and you produce critical analysis.